What's up and welcome to my Nitro 5, these are Nitro 5 live unboxing. So we're going to be going through everything that you need to know about this gaming laptop today. Uh, so we're going to be taking it out of the box, got it right here. And then we're going to test the keyboard, test the mouse. We're going to get it set up. We're going to do some basic benchmarks today, live on air, as long as everything is working. Um, and we're also going to go over the top deals of the day. So that we're going to start off with that while we wait for everyone to get onto the live stream. So let's just go ahead and dive right into that. So uh, I picked up most of these deals off of BestBuy.com. They're almost always rocking some good deals over there. So. We're gonna talk about the very best ones. I did go through and look at all their deals for today and there's a mixed bag. Some are good, some are bad. Now, this is not sponsored by Best Buy, but some of these links in the description down below are affiliated. So if you do use them, they do help support me as a creator. So thank you very much. I always wanna be upfront about those links. Now, uh, let's go over and talk about the top five deals that I was able to find today. There are links in the description down below, like I said to these laptops. So first up, a very budget-oriented machine. We have the Gigabyte G5. Now, I'm just gonna hop over to the live stream. Yeah, what's up, Amitef and Ellie? Uh, <laughs> so, welcome to the live stream. Just checking sure everything's good. Um, let's go ahead and go back into the deals here. So, Gigabyte G5, this one is kind of a, this is a very bare bones budget laptop, only has eight gigs of RAM, and we're talking about a 3050 Ti, same as the Acer Nitro 5. Now this one is $250 cheaper than the Nitro 5, but the Nitro 5 I'm pretty sure has better chassis quality and has 16 gigs of RAM, uh, as well as potentially a better display and a newer, for sure, a newer 12th gen Intel processor. So that's also gonna make a big difference, or at least a little difference. It's a difference, right? It's newer technology, right? The 12th gen processors, usually, I think, are a pretty big step up from the 11th gen. I haven't done full detailed testing yet. We're gonna get into that soon here, right? But it's it should be a noticeable difference, um, even in some gameplay. So it depends on what game you're playing, though. Most games these days are not CPU bound. So overall, this here is a good laptop for the money. It's the best, cheapest machine. Like if you're on an ultra tight budget, this will still get you gaming. Uh, at 1080p really well. Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Now this one's $50 more. It was $50 cheaper. It wasn't $550, but they raised the price to $600. So just know that it might go uh, down in price again, maybe. It's kind of fluctuating around in price. But uh, overall, I do have this machine. I did an unboxing of this one. I was pretty impressed with this machine. Um, for the money, it, it feels very similar to like a Legion 5 but it's a little bit more budget, not as nice of display, um, only eight gigs of RAM, and a little bit older, a little bit on the older side of the processor as well, but a 3050 Ti and 120 hertz display. So this thing's gonna be able to game really well. Um, I, I think between this one and the Gigabyte G5, if they're the same price, I would go with the Lenovo, but since the Gigabyte's a little cheaper now, I'd probably say Gigabyte maybe, but maybe worth the $50 extra, I don't know. Um, this one is an absolute banger of a deal. The Asus Strix G15 Advantage Edition, QHD RX 6800M, and Ryzen 9 5980HX. This was the top processor for Ryzen of this year. Um, of course, there are newer processors out now. Uh, but at 1099, you're getting a QHD display and a very powerful GPU. The main downside here is that it's a Radeon GPU, which, mean you might run, which means you might run into some driver's issues down the line. So... There's that, and then you have uh, the Asus Zephyrus G14, 120 hertz WQX GA, Ryzen 9 with 16 gigs of DDR5 memory and a Radeon RX 6700S for 1099. So this thing's ultra portable and still fairly powerful. Nice, you get a one terabyte SSD. Yeah, you only get a 512 gig on this one. So um, if you're looking for something really portable and powerful, this one's a really great option in my opinion, but again, driver's issues, potentially with the Radeon GPU. And last up, we have the laptop we'll be unboxing today. Um, well, technically we have two Nitro 5s here at the end, but uh, the guy in the box right here, we've got an i5 12500H, an RTX 3050 Ti, 16 gigs of DDR4, a 512 gig SSD, uh, $200 off for $799. It's 
uh, an okay deal for the specs. It's really like, you know, the Lenovo and Gigabyte G5 are a slightly better deal for just like the raw silicon you're getting. But in this chassis, you're getting an updated design. And I'm really curious to check it out because I haven't actually been able to, uh, you know, get much hands-on time with it. I did take a look at it in, when I was in Best Buy in person, and it did seem pretty nice in the first few seconds I got to look at it. But, but yeah, so, uh, the, and last up, we have the Acer Nitro 5. This one has an RTX 3060, and it's only 798. That's a really baller, um, powerful GPU for the money, right? It's going to be much more powerful than um, these other budget-oriented machines because it's the 3060. But it's an older Nitro 5 chassis, so it's not going to be as uh, updated and modern. So there's like a trade-off there that you'd have to make if you went with this machine. And I don't know about the display. It's probably not as nice of a display. Anyway, so let me hop over to the live chat again here. So what's up, JoJo? Uh, Zydecan, welcome to the live stream. Hey, Britt. Um, how was you? How was your night? Nice. I it was good. I got to play some alluvium. I captured a bunch of alluvials. I've got some tier two alluvials now. I might do a live stream sometime playing that game. I'm thinking of launching a whole new channel focused around alluvium. I really love that game. Um, anyway, let's move on to the unboxing, the main event. Let's go ahead and pull out the machine here. There it is. So we're gonna take off the seal. Hopefully we don't have another dead laptop. I don't anticipate we will. It's pretty rare that that happens. Choo -choo -choo. Kaboom. All right, so that's the, we're out of the box now. Um, taking a look at some of the pamphlets here. We've got the quick start setup guide. Just indicating what the buttons do. Pretty basic. A few different languages. Got a question about your device. Go to support.acer.com. Uh, this is sealed. This is interesting. Okay, so it's got a seal with a sticker you have to actually tear or open. Okay, what's in here? Ooh, we got some stickers. <laughs> so you got some some fancy smancy stickers, um, and. An international traveler's warranty, so this is for, if you're traveling out of the country, you can get coverage, but it doesn't cover you if you live out of the country. So it only covers you if you're traveling, so keep that in mind. Um, all right. Shalam. Ooh. Okay, so we got a few different items inside of this box. Let's get the power adapter out first. So there's the power adapter. It's a nice medium small size, fairly thin. I like the power adapter size here. Um, and I like that we have a nice long cable. That's really nice if you're trying to use a laptop up on a desk or a table away from an outlet, you can still easily plug it in, which is, uh, I've had some really short cables before with laptops and it is a pain to get plugged in sometimes. So, and with gaming laptops, you usually want to plug it in. So it looks like it's about, I don't know, an eight, nine foot cable uh, when both are strung together. Um, and the power brick is a, let's see if we can find out, it's 180 watts. So that's a pretty good wattage on the power brick there. Um, so here is the HDD upgrade cable. So this is going to be used if you want to plug in a two and a half inch uh, HDD. And we'll try to take a look at that when we take off the bottom of the laptop. Um, all right, so here is a lanyard of some kind. Um, it's got a carabiner. That's kind of cool. And then we've got ourselves a little mount thing. I don't know. 
So I guess you would, it's a, it's a key ring. So this would just go onto like a backpack strap or something and then you can mount something to that. Kind of cool. Um, looks like we got a few extra case screws as well for the HDD upgrade. So this would go along with this. I'm assuming the caddy for the drive is in the laptop itself. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these out for now. And then let's go ahead and take the bottom of the laptop off. So Kareem RW asked, at about $1,700, Lenovo or Asus SCAR, or Asus in general, plan is to do a racing sim and be as portable to play games, uh, not the sim. Um, so I don't know exactly what... Um, are, you are you planning to do 2D racing, I'm guessing? And at $1,700, you can get yourself a really nice machine. But, I, I mean, I went over the best, I went over the best deals here at the beginning. And at $1,099, this Asus Strix G15 Advantage Edition, QHD, RX 6800M, this is going to be able to play probably all the racing sim games really, really well. I mean, I don't think you necessarily would have to upgrade beyond this. Um... If you want something even more portable, you could go with this guy. I don't know. It depends on how portable you're looking. But both of those would, would do pretty well for racing sims. Um, and well below your $1,700 budget. Um, if you go up to $1,700, you might be able to get something a little bit more powerful. Maybe an RTX 3070 Ti, perhaps. Or maybe an RTX 3080. Um, I know there was a GS... Uh, an MSI GP66 with an RTX 3080 for around that price point um, during Black Friday. So that was a pretty good deal. And that would probably give you a little better performance overall. Kareem, looking for a 1440p and a 3070 Ti. Gotcha. Um, yeah, the GP66 is not 1440p. That's going to be where it's going to be a little trickier. Uh, I think there was a deal... On BNH Photo, Kareem, if you uh, if you go to BNH Photo, I think there were some deals over there for a 3070 Ti with a 1440p. I think it was 1500 for a Legion 5 or 5 Pro, I think. Okay, so here's the machine. Um, let's go ahead and just take a look at the outside here. This almost looks identical from the previous year, almost, from the outside. I think when we open it up, we'll, we'll see a bigger difference, but I gotta say, even just holding it and feeling the edges, this feels quite a bit more premium. So, I gotta make sure we're on the right screen. So, here's the, here's the chassis. Uh, it, it just feels rigid, like everything on this, all on the edges here, feels really solid and really well built. That's that's an improvement already in terms of chassis build quality. So kudos to Acer on that front. Looks like this is gonna be a fingerprint magnet. Let's just do a fingerprint test. Oh, maybe not. I'm looking at the reflection here. Okay, yeah, not much of fingerprints so far. I mean, my hands are fairly dry, but even now they're a little oily. Okay, so little bits of oiliness, but it's really minor actually. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so opening it up. There we go, there we go. All right, so, all right. Okay, I'm, I'm fairly impressed with the, the layout of the keyboard. The initial feel of the keyboard is quite nice. This is a big step up. This is more like the Acer Predator Helios 300 chassis than it is close than it was to the last generation of the Nitro 5. So this is a huge improvement overall, without a doubt, compared to the previous generation um, for the Nitro 5. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and get this bottom off of this laptop. Hope you review the MSI GE 67HX. It has an OLED screen. Oh, uh, that's cool. Uh, I don't know if I will review that one or not. Uh, if Best Buy starts selling it, I probably would consider reviewing it. For right now, that's like the top of my list is the 
the laptops, like the best options available at Best Buy are kind of what I'm trying to focus on just because uh, it's really easy for you guys to potentially buy them if you want to. Uh, and a good return policy over there. And they have an affiliate program. So that is that is good to help support creators for most of the laptops at least. So, But uh, I will branch out to other types of laptops, especially if laptop manufacturers are willing to send me the laptop so I don't have to buy it myself. Um, and as I get back into doing these reviews, I'm sure laptop manufacturers will start reaching out again. Because for a little while there, they, they stopped. Because I, I took about an 8 to 10 month break from making these reviews while I sold my house, traveled, and moved into a new house. The GEH67HX. King Dragon says Best Buy does sell it. Okay, well, let me go take a look at it real quick. Um, GE67. MSI Raider GE67. Ooh. This boy's this boy's not cheap. Okay. Interesting. So it's kind of like the GE66, but the, the, the successor to it, basically. And I have, I have reviewed the GE66. Um, does this one have the OLED display, though? Um, yeah, it is OLED. Oh, it's an OLED 240 hertz. Ooh, okay. Well... That does pique my interest a little bit. I'll have to think about it. I will have to think about it. That's pretty sweet. It's a bit on the pricier side for sure, though. Okay, let's continue taking these screws out. Do, 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 do. How is everyone's day? I hope your days are going amazing. Tonight I will be opening presents with the family for Christmas uh, early because my family's in town only for like this week and then ever everyone is like leaving to go elsewhere for actual Christmas. So this family group that I'm down where I'm at right now is basically going to open their gifts early. So Actually, I do a little more Christmas shopping before, uh, before I head over there. One more stop to make. Okay. All right, so we're ready to try to pry the bottom off. I believe we got all the screws out. Don't forget to take out this middle screw. You will not have a good time if you forget. Now. If you have never taken a laptop chassis apart, I recommend getting a, a kit like this. There's a link in the description down below to Amazon where I got this, um, or, or something similar. You can get something cheaper, but this is the kind of kit I'm probably gonna use for like 30 years, so I get a nice one. Um, anyway, so this has little plastic tools that'll help you get in there and open up the chassis. I'm trying to see if there's any area that is easiest to open the chassis up, but it looks like this corner is probably the easiest. Probably. Maybe. Oh, we're getting some separation here. Alright. And sometimes you have to use multiple tools, you know? get in there there we go so in this case the guitar pick style one actually works better to get the initial prying action started So this thing's coming off pretty easily now. Got 
to be gentle with it. Kind of lift it off. There we go. All right. Beautiful. What's up, Mari? Mari Sano? Don't ruin the laptop and give it as a gift. <laughs> On MSI Store, it's 2000. Also, OLED 240 hertz is the best gaming display. Yeah, that's probably the best gaming display. I would agree with that. Um, it's very rare to get that. All right, so let me break the bottom. Let me break down the bottom of this chassis, and then I'll go over how to install the HDD if you need to. All right. So Okay, so we have our CPU fan and our GPU fan. Um, actually, it's hard to tell which one's which. This one's probably the CPU. That's probably the GPU. But they have a, sh a main shared heat pipe here, which is nice. Two, and they, they each have a dedicated heat pipe and then a shared heat pipe, which is really helpful for distributing out the, the cooling load of the laptop. Um, allowing for a better shared um, thermal output, I guess you would say. Now, this is the memory shroud. This covers up the RAM. The RAM is underneath here. Now, this does have 16 gigs of RAM, so you don't have to worry about upgrading that. Most likely, it should be good to go. Here is the SSD drive right here, and here is the hard drive caddy. Now, if you do get a 2.5-inch hard drive, you'll pop that into here, uh, but you probably would want to actually take this little tray out, so you remove these screws first, and then you would put this, uh, you'd put these screws to attach the two and a half inch drive inside of this caddy. Then you would put this guy on the end of that two and a half inch drive, pop it back in here, and then you're gonna have to snake that two and a half inch drive. It looks like it's over right into this little ribbon port right here. Now I'm gonna kind of zoom in a bit more here so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about a little better. So take this thing out, put the screws in the sides, and then use the ribbon port, use the ribbon cable to come out here, and then this would go right into that spot right there, it looks like. Um, yeah. So this is your SSD, this is your Wi-Fi module, um, and here is an extra SSD slot, so if you want to add a second SSD, you can do so right there, it's very nice. Our battery size on this one is a 57 watt hour battery, so that's a decent size, but the maximum size you could possibly get in a laptop is 100 watt hours or 99. So that is good, but not great. Mainly it's good because it's a budget laptop and this is an Intel CPU, so it should have still pretty dang good battery life overall. So overall, good upgradability on the hard drive because you can add an extra SSD easily and another hard drive right here. So two drive slots open. Memory's on the easily accessible side as well and the repasting, if you want to repaste this thing, you don't need to flip the laptop upside down, which is also very nice. So overall, I think the laptop's upgradability is pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and get the cover back on and get the, get the laptop fired up. Let me go ahead and check chat as well. All right. Hey, does the Lenovo website keep crashing for you because you try to browse? I don't know if it does. I'm in Trinidad. I can be scrolling through it and it'll crash on the laptop and phone. I don't know, man. It doesn't usually crash on me. Um, Jax Fenrir, do you have any cheap kits that you recommend for those who won't be opening laptops often? Um, are you talking about uh, like the Fix-It kit? Jax, I mean, what I would do if you're looking for a more budget one, the main thing to look for is that you want um, multiple heads, so you can have lots of different options depending on the type of under screws you need to unscrew from a laptop. Um, the main types are going to be small little Phillips heads, and then also like the T, like the T7, T5, T6 these like Torx style screws are used on some laptops as well. The, the majority of laptops these days are using Phillips. So that is, that is nice that they're not using the Torx as much anymore. So, um, but you will, need, you will need some kind of prying tool 
which is, I believe, the technical term for it. If you look for an item on there, it's called a spuger. S-P-U-G-E-R. Okay. So, and th there should be lots of spuging tools, uh, toolkits on Amazon for like 10, 12, 15 bucks or something like that. Um, and then with a, another screw kit, you probably get like for $10 or something. It's just nice that this kit has like everything you might need for all kinds of different sizes, you know, with a magnetic tip and multiple different types of high quality spuger tools. I don't know. I, I have found it to be excellent. Like it's a, it's definitely a more expensive kit though. So I understand if you want to get something cheaper. Right. Let me tuck this guy up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing a little better. So before you put screws back in, you just want to make sure the thing is popped all the way in, all the way around. And if you can, it is best to put the same screws back into the same hole. Looks like I'm not doing that, but I think all of these screws on the Nitro 5 appear to be the same this time around. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes there are different links for different screw holes. Um, but yeah, I put, I put that screw, I put these screws on the opposite side. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a problem in this case, but it might be a problem depending on, you know, the laptop that you're working on. So I want to make sure all of these are tight. Beautiful. What's up, Crest? Welcome to the stream. All right, now, moment of truth. Will this Acer turn up? I think it will. Fingers crossed it's going to turn on. Um, all right. I got to figure out how to turn this thing off. I gotta figure out how to plug it in, sorry. We got a lot of plugins over here. Um, I probably have one of those plugs in the Lenovo charger, so I gotta figure out which one that is and I'll plug that one, but. It's not a big deal. Oh, let's go over the ports too before, well, we can do that while it's turning on in a minute here. So going over the keyboard layout. All right. So the keyboard layout on this one is a pretty nice keyboard layout in my opinion. You've got uh, rewind, pause, forward, power button, a full number pad, which is, I really like having a number pad. Full size arrow keys looks like you can press the FN button and then do your audio up and down and your screen brightness with the arrow keys. Then you've got F1 through 12 along the top here, a print screen button, insert and delete. So I mean, it's got every single key that you would ideally want, you know, on a laptop keyboard. So overall, I'm very impressed with the layout of the keyboard. And the keyboard does feel pretty, pretty dang on good in my opinion as well. So, especially for a budget machine, this doesn't feel like a budget machine anymore. You know, like it, I always, I've always thought of the Acer Nitro series as the ultimate budget 
machine and I just, I can't say that anymore, right? I just, I cannot, I cannot say this is, this is a super budgety machine anymore. So, cause this is definitely more of a mid tier quality grade of build quality. Um, all right, let me zoom in here. I'll show you how rigid the chassis is. I don't think it's perfectly rigid, but like, look at this. I'm pressing really hard on the side here and there's basically no flex at all along the edges. Little bit of flex right here, not much. Very little flex throughout the chassis. Going to the, this is the weakest part of the laptop usually, right around the keyboard space bar area and a bit a little bit of flex they're still below average though for most laptops i'm impressed that's a, that's really impressive all right so uh let's get the cameras repositioned so you guys can see the display it looks right now that this is in all red backlighting mode um, I can turn the lights off real quick. So you can see what the backlighting looks like. You see that? And it does look like all of the symbols are lit up, including the secondary lights on the keyboard. So that's very nice because sometimes manufacturers don't light up those secondary lights and it can be really hard to see which one has the at symbol or the money symbol or something, you know. Um, overall, I'd say the keyboard backlight is not super bright and it's, but it, it, it is functional. It is functional in a dark room in particular. So um, it's going to make it easy to see it. And that's the most important thing if you're, you know, if you're studying late or working on something late and you need to see the keyboard better in a dark room. That's really what it's used for. It's, it, it is a cool factor, obviously, right? Like when you have a really cool looking keyboard, there's a cool factor to it. But this one, I wouldn't see as as cool factor, you know, mixed in as much. It's mainly really, uh, it's mainly really about the functionality for this machine. Now, the screenshot of the laptop online shows a multicolor keyboard, so I'm gonna see if I can make this thing into multicolor somehow. I wouldn't be surprised if you can, but right now, so far, it's not looking like it's multicolor. So it looks like it might be all red, we'll see. Um, Kareem RW, I love and miss these streams, but I gotta go. All right, Kareem, have a good one. That charger is screaming under the laptop. Oh, oops. Okay, so this thing is not a soft closed hinge. It is. It does kind of flop closed. Um, but the there is no charger underneath the laptop though. The charger is down underneath over here. Um, speaking of which, let's go ahead and tidy up just a little bit here. Put my iFixit tools away. And then we're going to reposition so you guys can see the Nitro 5 display. And uh, we can get everything set up for the benchmarking, which, hey, this live stream is going a lot better than the last one, right? So, the last Acer live stream, at least. <laughs> so, that's good. All right, uh, also does it have a display port over type C? Does it have HDMI 2.0 or 2.1? Those are good questions. And we will try to figure them out after we get in. I mean, I would, Oh, it would be cool, at least, I would hope, that we at least have one high-speed display out. So this uh, 
Might as well go over the ports now. Uh, let me finish creating a pin. And uh, let me just make sure the laptop is kind of like doing its thing. And then we will. Then we'll take a look at the, I'll show you the ports. Um, all right, so we're going to switch to this display. So this is the right side of the laptop, and we're going to need to try to focus it on here. All right, so here's the right side of the laptop. We have two USB 3 dot somethings, it looks like. They look like high speed because they have the blue uh, on the inside, so that's nice that they're not you know, the slow 2.0. Some budget laptop manufacturers put the slow ones. We have another fast USB on this side. We have an Ethernet port and a headphone port. Now, I did see a couple of status lights over here on the right side. Looks like one is for power and the other is a blue light. I'm not sure what it indicates. Maybe that that USB can charge. Maybe it's a charging indicator. I have to figure it out. Okay, so, and on the back, we have an HDMI, a USB-C, and the power adapter port. Now, uh, this, this USB-C looks like it has a little Thunderbolt symbol next to it, so I'm assuming it's the super fast USB-C. So if that's the case, you should be able to use HDMI, uh, 2.1 adapters with this, as well as uh, USB-C to display port adapters. So you should be able to display it on like ultra high resolution monitors and 4K 120 hertz uh, if you need to, if that's the case. We can try it on the desktop behind me. Um, I don't know about that HDMI. It's hard to know without uh, checking the manufacturer technical specs or something online. Um, indicating or just straight testing it because I could I could try hooking it up to the machine behind me and get myself a protein sip ah, nice okay now it's checking for updates wants to get the latest version of Windows 11 of course and now we need to reposition the camera. Okay. Uh, I made it right VHDL code for a 32 bit processor for my final project and computer hardware course. Nice. That's cool, Ellie, that you're into that, uh, into computer hardware course. That's pretty cool. Uh, MK says this is $800 or the this at $800 or the tough A15 with the Ryzen 7 6800H with 3050 Ti at $700 with only 8 gigs of RAM. Mmm. I would have to see that other one, MK. Uh, let me see if I can find which one you're talking about and answer your question. So, this one I believe is the one you're talking about. So full HD 144 Hz, Ryzen 7 6800H, 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM, that's pretty nice. RTX 3050 Ti, hmm. I have not tried this chassis in hand. I know that the 2021 edition of this laptop was pretty disappointing in terms of all the power limits and how much performance the laptop had for the internals. Um, from the reviews, but this looks like an updated chassis and it may have some improvements to the internals as well. Um, I, I'm not sure which one I would necessarily recommend. This one is very tempting though. The Asus Tough would be, it's, it's in the same ballpark for sure as the Acer Nitro 5. Um, the processor, in theory, I think would be better in the Asus Tough. Just not sure about the performance. It'd probably be very similar. It's probably more about which chassis you like better 
more than anything. Like that top, does it have a number pad? It has a number pad. I don't know. I think that's a tough that's a tough call. Maybe try going to Best Buy and checking out which one you like in person a little more. I don't know. Um, all right, so time to reposition because we have liftoff. We are we are good to go. Uh, let me reposition like this for just a moment. So yesterday I unboxed that desktop right there, CyberPower PC. I bought that from CyberPower on Black Friday. Um, it's got an RTX. 30 or uh, RTX 4090. It's a beast of a machine. And I've been enjoying playing some VR games on it. Let's see here. So let me put this one up. And also Illuvium. Those are the two games I've been trying out today. There's a new VR game called Hubris. Uh, it's really incredible graphics um, for VR compared to most VR games. And I, I am very curious if the game play will be very good. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed pretty questionable when I was initially checking it out. All right, so here is the display. Um, you can see on the camera there, the laptop display. I'm going to try to get this thing lined up properly. There we go. All right, so I would, I would guess the display is probably 280 nits. Between 250 and 300 is my guess for the display nits brightness. The, the, the color gamut doesn't seem like a 100% sRGB, but it, maybe it would surprise me. Oh, that, that looks pretty clean, actually. Yeah, I would... Yeah, I'm guessing the color gamut's not super high, but it's not necessarily like, it's not abysmal is what I would say. It's the way I would describe it, is that it's a functional display that if you're not picky, it's not going to be a problem at all. You know, if you're very picky, then yeah, it's probably not ideal. All right. Now let's go ahead and get the, oops, sorry, bumping the camera a little bit there. Let us go ahead and get the drivers. Where are the drivers? The drivers are right here. All right, so I'm glad you have at least one USB on the left side so you can get your mouse cable out of the way if you need to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the background to be this one. Okay. So we are grabbing Steam. We're going to get a 3D Mark Time Spy out. Get that installed. And then we are going to get Cinebench R23 and get that going as well. Are you going to test the VR capabilities of this laptop? Um, I have not. Uh, I've, I'm not in this live stream at least. Emil Martinson, hello. Have not watched the channel in like three years. Good to see you, man. All right. Hey, thanks, Emil, for stopping by. All right. So we've got the i5-12500H here. 
Steam is updating in the background. Let's go ahead and get HW info pulled up. And then we'll also get MSI Afterburner set up as well. Yeah, the 3050 Ti will be able to play VR games, just not, just not ultra high resolution, and you'll have to tone the settings down quite a bit, depending on what game you're playing. Um, if you want to do VR, you want a really capable VR machine, I recommend getting an RTX 3060 as the minimum. Um, I mean, not the minimum, but like recommended to be able to play like on a little bit higher settings and higher resolution. Um, all right, here's Afterburner. There we go. All right, so we need GPU one. We're gonna want the power, temperature limit, voltage limit, no load limit. Uh, yeah, we need GPU one. Do the core clock. I'm not going to worry about the memory clock. CPU temperature. Is there... Do we do GPU temperature? They don't have... They don't have a GPU temperature option. Which I was really hoping to do. So we want CPU clock and CPU power. Frame rate, frame rate average, and 1% low. All right, so there's all of the values that we need for doing our benchmarks. Um, let me go into here and just set this to be size 14. There we go, that's ready to go. Cool, we're going to do Steam after Cinebench. Let me go ahead and see if there's anything running in the background. There probably is like Windows update or something. Um, system is pulling 5% CPU. Norton Security is pulling some CPU performance. Let's remove Norton. All right, we're probably gonna have to restart the machine. MK says, 11th and 12th mobile i5 problems have been fire. Well, that's sad for me. Laptop got me thinking, does a 12500H outperform an 11800H? It might in multi-core performance. <laughs> it might. Yep, maybe, we'll see. I would not be surprised. There's a lot more cores. Um, I believe, or is there? I believe, is it four high-end cores and eight efficiency cores? I think that's what it is. Let me look up the processor specs here. Um, I can do it on the on here. 
Okay, I5 12 500H specs. So we have a total of 12 cores. Yeah, four performance cores, eight efficiency cores, 16 total threads, because there is uh, dual threads on there is dual threads on the um, four high performance cores only. All right, so we are loaded back into Windows. Let's go to Task Manager. Just want to make sure nothing is running. Is this Planet Nine stub the? Is this the way to control the Nitro now? Planet Nine? I'm not sure. Um, I want to try to make sure this is in high performance mode, at least. Um, Nitro Sense, let's see, is that the software? to control the power, the performance modes of this machine. It's been a while since I've done a review on a Nitro 5. Yeah, it looks like this is, this is where you control or at least see. Yeah, so you can set max fan. There's the max fans, you can hear them. Whirring up. Pretty, pretty loud if you want them to be loud. I can feel a good amount of air moving. That's like an impressive amount of air, actually. Um, all right, so we'll do that, and then we'll also set it to performance mode for this test. Um, let's go ahead and get... That's good enough now. I don't see anything using the, the resources. We'll do... We'll do a run on Cinemage R23, or maybe a couple runs, without HW Info open, and then we'll open HW Info. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's find out how fast is this machine. What do you think about the Asus ROG Strix G15 Advantage Edition for $10.99 at Best Buy? I think that is a really good deal. Um, I was talking about that earlier at the very beginning of the live stream. I went over all the very best deals currently up on Best Buy's site and Walmart's site um, for around like the $600 to like $1,200 price range. And I think that is probably the best deal, or at least in terms of raw GPU performance for the money. Would you test the new Witcher 3 update that just dropped today? Um, sure. We'll do a Witcher 3 play test on this machine. Why not? That'll be the game that we'll do for today. 14,272 points for our multi-core <laughs> score. That's pretty good. That's really good, actually, for a budget-oriented machine especially only an i5 processor. Um, yeah, let me see. I think I only have the... Let me double check which processor I have in here. Yeah, so I've got the 11980HK in my Lenovo 7i, and I think that pulls a little bit higher than this, but it's pretty close. Pretty close. Miss your Valorant tests. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have time to do Witcher and Valorant. But maybe we could do a Valorant test as well. Maybe. How much time we got? It's 420. I've got 40 minutes left, basically. Um, so 14,578. So that was a little bit higher. We did a few hundred points more. Let's go ahead and get HW Info pulled up and let's see what our temperatures are like as well as our clock speeds. Oh. 
Okay, so you can see our high performance cores. I can zoom in on this and kind of break it down for you a little bit. Our high performance cores are pulling 4.19 gigahertz, or basically 4.2 gigahertz. Our efficiency cores are doing 3.1 gigahertz. So that's perf that's doing exactly how it's designed. And I'm not sure if those are the max clock speeds at this. Um, I'm not sure if those are the max clock speeds that this can do with all cores running, but the CPU is very hot. We've hit 96 degrees, 100 degrees, 93 degrees. So this thing is not, this thing is not a cool running machine. 93 degrees. We only got 14,000 points on that run. Keep in mind that we did do two runs previously, so the CPU temperature was kind of already heated up a little bit at least. Um, but these machines are designed to run up to 100 degrees Celsius often and frequently. It's not ideal in my opinion, especially if you want to keep your laptop for like five plus years, if you're going to run it at 100 degrees Celsius all the time. But the silicon in theory is able to handle it. And I did do a super, super hot um, 100 degrees nonstop test on an Oris X5 laptop and it ran for six months nonstop or I think five months nonstop at 99 degrees continuously and it is doing great. Um, still had really good performance and was still chugging when I sold the laptop. So 85 watts of power being pulled on that CPU. That's a really high for a budget machine and for an i5 processor. That's insane, actually. 93 watts being pulled. I'm going to move it so you can see the score when the score pops up, too. Um, but 85 watts, that is... I'm super impressed right now with what Acer is doing um, with the processor performance on this machine. Like, they, they're basically not holding back that processor at all. They're letting it fully open up and get as much performance as it can. There's no wonder it's hitting 90 plus degrees Celsius when it's pulling that kind of wattage. I mean, we saw the, the cooling system in this laptop. It's not, it's not bad, but it's nothing amazing. You know, like, it's only got two heat pipes, one shared... Uh, I mean, three heat pipes two, total, but one dedicated to the CPU and then one shared to the CPU, so... Overall, this thing's got killer CPU performance for the money. One of the best, one of the best performing CPUs for an i5 probably out there. Um, I'm guessing. If you're looking for a raw rendering performance for the money, this is going to be really good. Though you're going to get better performance if you can get uh, the i7 with eight performance cores instead of only four. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but that's almost for sure going to cost you north of $1,000 to get a processor like that, or at least at $1,000 or more. Um, okay, so we were hitting above 14000 with every single run in Cinebench R23. That's really, really good. Um, let's go ahead and get 3 Mark downloaded now. And I'm just going to switch this over to this camera. And we'll need to verify that we're logging in. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and zoom it out again. And we'll get back to this. So what did you guys think of that processor performance? I mean, I'm kind of blown away by it. I didn't think it was going to be that good. Um, I'd give it, for the money, I would give it a 9 out of 10. Maybe a 9.5 out of 10 in terms of 
performance for the money. The temperature was understandably hot, pulling up to like 85, 90 watts of power through the CPU. So it's it's just hard. It's hard for me to dock them for the temperature because they let the CPU just run at a really high performance level. Um, Yeah, so overall, I've, I'm impressed. Let's see how it does in 3D Mark Time Spy. I think that's kind of the next, um, the next big, the next big test, I guess you would say, like to see, you know, can it handle, can it handle uh, the GPU performance as high as say the Lenovo IdeaPad? Because um, they have the same GPU, maybe it's a higher clock speed in this unit, though I, I don't think it is. I think it's that Lenovo IdeaPad was uh, pulling, I think, 85 watts for a 3050 Ti. That was pretty impressive. So we'll see how many watts this laptop can put on the 3050 Ti. All right, so... Bada bing, bada boom. Three D Mark is running now. We're downloading The Witcher in the background. New Witcher should be a good test for ray tracing performance since the PC version now has RTGI, RTAO, RT reflections, and RT shadows. Interesting. So they've added ray tracing to uh, the new in the new Witcher update. I haven't really looked at it. I actually need to finish playing The Witcher three. I made it only probably like a quarter of the way through the game, and then just got stuck on a couple quests that were bugging out, and it just annoyed me so much I quit playing the game. But is 3D Mark the one that shows the benchmark overlay on games? So 3D Mark is a benchmarking performance tool that you can use to get a gauge on if your laptop is running at the approximate like right range of performance, basically, is the way I would describe it. Um, let me see if there's a way to... I want to make sure the Witcher pauses. We don't want the Witcher downloading while this is running. We've got... We need to make sure MSI Afterburner is running. All right, good. Now we're going to go ahead and run our Time Spy and see what we get. I'm really curious to see. Um, so, so yeah, 3D Mark is not the thing that shows the overlay. MSI Afterburner, the thing I just opened up, that's the thing that has the overlay. It's actually the Riva Tuner add-on to the Afterburner that has the overlay. But uh, Riva Tuner pulls the data from Afterburner to display it in the overlay. So. Do, do, do. So this right here 
up here on the left. This is being displayed by RevaTuner, but the data is being collected from Afterburner. So we're actually pulling 91 watts right now, which is really, really good. I'm super impressed. We are being power limited, which means we're getting a full load on the GPU. Um, we've got 1920, 1950 for the clock speed. Let's see if the wattage can keep up throughout the test. The CPU temperature is obviously very low. This is not very taxing on the CPU, just taxing on the GPU. Unfortunately, we don't have an option to add the GPU temperature to the laptop, so or to the overlay, um, uh, at least not right now. I don't know why it's not showing up, but I didn't see it in there in the afterburner settings. So, so if you weren't sure, RTGI is RT Global Illumination, and RTAO is RT Ambient Occlusion. Okay, all right. Thanks for uh, explaining that, Chris. That's useful to know. I like knowing the abbreviation. RTGI. Uh, ray tracing global illumination. RTAO. RT ambient occlusion. Freddie Paul Joe says, which is better? Are you talking about RTGI? RTAO? Or are you talking about Afterburner and Reva Tuner? Um, and, and I think you're talking about RTGI and RT ambient occlusion. Um, I'm guessing those things work in coordination to improve the lighting. So you probably want to have both of them on if you can, if you can. Um, so wow, we pulled up to 93 watts there. This thing, this Acer Nitro 5 is tuned to pull maximum juice to get maximum performance. That's very clear from these initial tests. That's a giant thumbs up in my book. Um, I'm curious what the temperature though is on the GPU. We can check in the HW Info 64 after this is done to see what the maximum temperature was during the test run. Ellie Ferris says, I use Reva Tuner with HW Info instead of MSI Afterburner. Like I pull data from HW Info, I think it's better as it has more options. That's fair. Um, I think that's, that is likely to be true. Um, I just like using Afterburner because the, uh, the interface is really simple to set up and use. Um, I think we can still, uh, I've pulled data from the HW info. We probably would be able to get that data for the GPU temperature, for example, if we used HW info. That's a good point. Maybe I should change up how I'm doing it, Ellie. Okay, 6114. And the CPU score is 9,642. Very, very good. Um, this is close to the maximum of what a 3050 Ti can pull. I think if you overclock this, you might be able to, I think, get maybe 6,500 maximum um, on the 3050 Ti. The 9,642 is as good as the top processors from the previous generation. And this is like a mid-level processor with an i5. So now that we have, um, now that we've done those hard benchmarks performance, I'm going to turn the fans down so the audio is better because <laughs> those fans are so loud. <laughs> They're very whistly fans. Unfortunately... We got, we got to figure that out as well during this test, so. Um, yeah. All right, so we're gonna finish downloading The Witcher. So Freddie Paul Joel says, the real question is, does it pull the same 90 watts when the CPU is pulling the max 45 watts as well? Well, the CPU itself was pulling like 85 watts when we were doing Cinebench R23. So if you want the maximum possible test, it would be can can the GPU, how many, how many watts can the GPU and CPU pull at the same time? Which is one of the tests I do for my reviews. So we'll have to see.
So right now I have fans in auto mode and the fans are very reasonable. They're not, they're not too loud right now. They're, they're noticeable. They're still a little bit whistly, but not bad. I do notice that when I lifted up the back of the laptop, the fan noise got quite a bit quieter. When you lower it to the ground, you're kind of getting more of a whistling sound to it. So, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put my HDD case underneath the back of the laptop, prop it up a little bit. It's good to do that if you're gonna do dedicated gaming sessions anyway, right? All right, so The Witcher is downloading at 36 megabytes a second. That'll take a few minutes to download. Let's also get Valorant downloaded, and I'll try to uh, I'll try to get that going as well because that's also a very quick install. Acer 2022 laptops got some loud fans between the Predator and the Nitro. Well, you know they've got high levels of performance, so that's almost. Loud fans are almost always going to come with high levels of performance. And, uh, you know, if you don't want as loud of fans, you can always use the laptop in lower performance modes and then reduce the fan noise because it's going to power limit the CPU and GPU to a lower level. Um, so, like, right now in auto, we're at 50, uh, 5,000 RPMs on the fans. We could set, you know, our... We could set our, our manual fans down. Looks like the lowest is 5,000 under the custom. And under the GPU, it looks like the lowest is also 5,000. So there's caps on how high or low you can set the fan speed. Interesting. That's kind of cool that you can control each fan individually though. So we're just gonna set it back to auto. I'm guessing if I set the performance level deck to default, that'll probably reduce our fan noise further. Yeah, the fans are coming down now that I'm not in performance mode. Looks like I need to download an updated version of Valorant installer. Looks like I have to log in here. Let me switch to the camera mode. All right. We're probably going to run out of juice in our batteries here before. So Witcher says it's going to be 13 minutes to finish the download. I logged in and Is there a way to just straight download the launcher? This is one of the reasons why I keep the the thing saved. It says redirection cookie does not exist. Why, why did they change this so much? I guess, let me try Microsoft Edge. Maybe that'll work for downloading this. Because it does not want to work with our standard, our uh, Firefox does not want to download it. There we go. 
There we go. Okay. And I'm also going to go ahead and update my thing here. So that way I have the updated installer on my hard drive kit. Cool. So we're going to download Valorant and Witcher 3 at the same time and we'll uh, load into whatever loads first. I tend, I tend to play games with the back lifted for better temps and lower fan noise. Yeah, it's a good idea to do that. Ellie says, the lowest in custom is the lowest it will go in auto mode. Your hardware is hot right now. That's why you can't go lower. Ellie, that's actually incorrect. It's um, When you're in performance mode, it's uh, it sets a minimum fan RPM because they don't want the laptop to overheat and fry itself. So the lowest you can go when you have the laptop in performance mode is 5,000 RPMs or maybe in custom mode, um, unless I misread what you said. The lowest in auto, uh, custom mode is the lowest it will go. Your hardware is hot right now. Yeah, the, it's it's not because the hardware is hot. It's because I was in performance mode. Watch. When I jump to performance mode again, the fans will probably jump up. Yeah, so the fans are jumping up back into high RPM mode because I changed the performance. Uh, if I go back to default, they will get quieter again. So we're downloading Valorant and The Witcher 3. We will play like a quick round of Valorant. And then we will do a load into The Witcher 3. So we're at 44% and 35%. And uh, it's a good time, I suppose, to go ahead and just switch the batteries out here on the camera. I used to have it set up. Audio is going to go out for a second, guys. Audio should be good. Cool. All right, so we're at 40, 49% and 47%. Things are downloading quick. Let's, I just want to kind of point out the webcam. Maybe we can do a quick webcam test while things are downloading. Um, so there's a webcam located right here at the top middle of the display. That's nice. There I am. Hello. Taking some snappies. Snap, snaps. Very nice. Uh, now this is me recording audio. The fans are on a little bit. Um, and this is video. It looks like it's fairly clear. I mean, it's not an amazing webcam, but it's 
Looks to be a little bit above average compared to most budget gaming laptops at least. I'm not sure if it's 1080p. It looks to be about 720p probably for the webcam. Um, but it is it is fairly clear. But the colors are a little bit meh, I would say. The colors on this are a little bit meh. Um, yeah. Overall, nice. And I can see that the webcam also has a green light lit on the camera there when the camera is active so you'll know when someone is looking at you through your webcam. That's nice. Okay, cool. And um, yeah, so that's the webcam. I'd give the webcam a s s six, five or six out of 10, seven out of 10, I don't know. Webcams. Uh, are not something that most manufacturers are investing heavily into um, unless it's like a more of a business oriented laptop perhaps because then the webcams are used oftentimes for business calls so yeah I I wish they would do better webcams especially on the premium gaming laptops because a lot of premium gaming laptops are used for business as well as gaming um, and Gaming laptops are obviously used for streaming as well, right? So, like, why are webcams all crap? Pretty much all of them are crap on gaming laptops. So, um, it's a bit sad that they aren't better, in my opinion. All right, I'm going to grab a cup of water or a drink of water, and I'm going to touch base with Carla, and I will be right back. Dun, dun, dun. It's going to be like probably two minutes. Eighty-seven percent, and sixty-five percent. So we're getting close. What's up, hot look? Welcome to the live stream. We're going to be testing Valorant and The Witcher Three. If you're just hopping onto the live stream. And, uh, and then that'll be it for the live stream. So. And it turns out I don't have to go directly at 6. It's actually a little bit later than I thought. So actually it would be 5 is the goal to end the live stream. But it's okay to go a little bit beyond that. But not by... I don't want the live stream to be too long. So we'll just go ahead and go right into Valorant as soon as... It's done installing. You might have to restart the machine. Sometimes you have to restart it. I want this to turn on with Windows, and I want this to turn on with Windows, and let me turn on. HW info 
64. Nice, so we'll be able to see kind of our average temperatures. So while we're installing all these applications, the, both games installing at the same time, our CPU is coming up in terms of temperature, though our fan speeds are pretty quiet right now. But the, the CPU is hitting like 70, 80 degrees while everything's being installed. Uh, keep in mind this room is a little bit on the warmer side as well compared to before. This is more like 80-ish degrees now, so... Let me see if I can add this to the overlay. All right. Game requires a restart. So, that's what we're gonna do. We are going to go ahead and restart. Cool, so Valorant is ready to go, but we just gotta get a restart, because I, I believe Valorant uses an anti-cheat that requires a restart, um, and then it like hooks into the system. That's my doggy Zeusy. TPM right for Valorant. I'm not sure which cheat they use. I think it's this. Riot Vanguard is the name of it. But you have to have it running in order to run Valorant, so. closer to the gameplay action here. Wait. We are still updating, it looks like. Okay, The Witcher is downloading now. Looks like The Witcher is going a bit faster now. by the time we actually get into a match in Valorant. It's probably slowing the loading process. Did something happen? Valorant didn't launch, or did it? It says Valorant is running. I mean, is it running? <laughs> it doesn't seem to be running to me. I mean, it says Valorant's running, but it does not appear to be running to me. Okay, well, we have to log in again.
Well, it doesn't appear that Valorant actually wants to run. I'm guessing we need to update our drivers in order to get Valorant to actually open. That's probably the reason. The most likely culprit would be updating the NVIDIA driver. Do, 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 do. Let's see if we can get logged into this to update the driver. I don't know if we'll be able to. Yeah, uh, yeah, they'll probably be okay. Let's see if we can get into The Witcher. I would like it to retry the sync. I'd like to be able to get the files. It may be because of the new update, though. The, the, new, the new version of the game may not be compatible with the old saves. So we'll just try it anyway. It would kind of be a bummer if they did that, but I would think they wouldn't do that. Hard to say. All right. The Witcher 3 Next Gen Update. Let's find out if it's uh, if it works well on this machine or not. So this might be a driver update needed as well. All right, let's load up. This bard's tale begins near White Orchard, with my dear friend Geralt of Rivia All seeking right. his lover of yore, the sorceress Yennefer. She'd eluded him for years, but now seeing just a few steps ahead. The speakers sound all right for a budget machine. Nothing amazing, right? I would not call these speakers... I'd give the speakers like a 6 or 7 out of 10 for gaming laptops. Okay, I'm going to turn the volume down. Alright, and uh, we need Afterburner running. I don't know if we're going to be able to get it to all work. So Witcher's almost always a bit glitchy the first time you go through an area, so I always go out here and look around for a moment. Oop. We just fell down and died. Okay. Uh, that's funny. Uh, I need to check the graphics settings and see what we have the graphics set at. Initially here, I can tell it's fairly choppy. It makes me wonder if we're using the correct settings. Let's see. Ray tra so ray tracing is on. That's probably the reason. Oh, we have anti-aliasing, which we can turn on. We can turn on DLSS, actually. 
I'm going to set everything to ultra, but anti-aliasing and ray tracing to off. I always turn hair works off. Everything else set to ultra. Let's see how things run. This is close to how I used to run and benchmark the game. But the game is obviously different now than it used to be. The one issue I wish mini gaming laptops had good speakers. It's something MacBooks have been doing great and mini Windows laptops suck at. Yeah, they should have bigger and better speakers, you would think, because they're gaming laptops, right? Alright, so I can tell this is not a super high frame rate, though I can't seem to get... I can't seem to get the afterburner to load in. We're set on... There, we're going to go to windowed mode. And we'll try going to full screen mode. Ah, full screen mode is a bit uh, smoother for sure. I mean, I'm guessing right now we're getting around 30 FPS, somewhere in that range, maybe even a little less. I'm gonna restart the game. Now that we have Afterburner open, see if we can get the overlay to hook in so we can get an FPS reading. RTGI is very expensive. Also, the SSRI for water was changed from the original game. Okay. Interesting. Well, it's definitely a different game, and you can't, you can't compare benchmarks, this benchmark, to the old benchmark... Um, Maybe on the same hardware you could to see if the game runs easier or harder. Obviously it's going to be harder probably in general, but... Um, yeah, right now we're not getting the overlay to come in. And I wonder if we'll get it when we load into the game. Probably not, if we're not getting it already. Um, it is disappointing that we're not getting the overlay. Show on screen. Let me turn it up to medium. Whoa! This is a lot smoother now. Okay, now it feels like 60 FPS. Way better, way more responsive. Um. Again, I wish I could get an FPS overlay. Is there a default overlay in all hidden here? I don't think there is. Maximum frames per second. We'll put that to 144. Vsync off. And we're still on ultra settings. Yeah, now this is smooth. So, the new Witcher game is going to take a little bit of fiddling with the settings to get the right settings for sure, because it's, um, it's gone through a lot of graphical changes. I'm curious how it looks with DLSS enabled. Let's hit the DLSS and we'll do uh, quality. Oh yeah, that looks good. It, it looks like that increased the FPS another little bit as well. So this is feeling definitely above 60 FPS now. And man, that is clear. So DLSS is looking spiffy on this laptop and the game is playing great on ultra settings let's try adding some ray tracing into it we'll see if it changes what the lighting looks like here Ooh. I 
turned on ray tracing. Looks like it crashed the thing. It crashed the the laptop. It did. We'll send the report in for him. Okay. Well, we'll try. We'll see if we can get ray tracing to work. And we'll have to call it there. You could do NVIDIA's Alt-R if you have GeForce Experience downloaded. It, GeForce Experience is downloaded. But I don't think it's configured to be working. On a 3050 Ti, medium and high mix will probably be ideal. Well, MK, I was just playing on all ultra, and it was easily over 60 FPS. Um, and with DLSS on quality mode, the FPS increased a little bit more. Even I could tell it kind of jumped up a little bit better. So uh, I'm, I can't get the actual overlay, but this is this is perfect, flawless performance right now. Almost like I haven't seen any stutters at all either. And Witcher usually stutters quite a bit. So. Yeah, and if I were to guess, I'm guessing this is between 60 and 80 frames per second right now. It's, it's really hard to know for sure exactly, though, obviously. So, is ray tracing enabled now? Let me see. Ray tracing is not enabled. Let's try turning it on again. It didn't crash that time. Okay, so ray tracing is turned on. Oh yeah, we're getting, we're definitely getting some stutters. 3050 Ti is probably not going to handle ray tracing in general. They don't have very many RT cores in this GPU. Um, so it's only going to be able to play the most basic ray tracing. Now, if you were to upgrade, well, it's there's a couple things we could do. Try to make this work better. Not that. We want Nitro Sense. Um, we want to set this to performance mode. And we want to set DLSS to ultra performance. Let's try that out. Oh, it looks so muddy now. And the FPS didn't really jump up that much, if I'm being honest. So, don't think that's going to work. In general, I think DLSS is just not going to be something this laptop's going to be capable... Or, sorry, ray tracing is not something this laptop's going to be capable of in most gaming titles. But without ray tracing, everything on Ultra... Boom, this laptop is freaking smoking this game just fine. So, all right, well, that's going to be the test for today. I've got to figure out why MSI Afterburner and Reba Tuner is not, you know, uh, showing the overlay. I'll have to troubleshoot that some more because initially troubleshooting it, it's not revealing anything. But, yeah, MK, the game is a 2015 game. Yeah, Witcher 3 came out a long time ago. Um, and that was like a GTX 1080 Ti was the very best GPU you could get. And the 3050 Ti, I think, is only a little bit slower than the 1080 Ti. Or like, like a laptop GTX 1080, for example. Or maybe it's about the same speed, actually, as that one. Maybe a little bit slower. It's mostly, it's, it's pretty close. I, I love the fact that we have DLSS, at least, on the, the machine. Um, cause that does add, uh, you know, the NVIDIA functionality of DLSS can add a lot of performance in certain games, especially games like Cyberpunk. Um, any DLSS supported title typically can have a nice bump in FPS and it still looks pretty close to identical, if not identical at, at the highest quality settings and you still get a performance bump. So 
Overall first impressions of the machine. Let's let's talk. So the Nitro 5 is I think a a more premium machine than in the past. I think that's the biggest thing to take away from the, the initial impressions here. The keyboard and trackpad are both improved. The chassis overall build quality has moved up a notch from being entry level budget to being a mid range build for sure. Um, the internal components are tuned very high performance and very high fan noise as well. Um, so if you like high performance and you like high fan noise, You'll be able to handle that with this, so just wear headphones, you'll be good. Um, or if you want to turn down the fan noise, it's still fairly reasonable. Though I will say, uh, the performance will probably slip a bit when you turn down the uh, the fan noise, right? You're going to have to lower the, the power limits on some of the components. But at least you have that flexibility with this machine, which is great. I love that. Um, the CPU performance was awesome for the money at uh, over 14,000 on Cinebench R23. is really, really good. Um, and so overall, I think, I think overall I would be able to recommend this machine at $800. I think it's a good deal at, if it was say 700 or less, I would think it's a fantastic deal. Probably. Um, the only thing is the only thing that kind of leaves me, I guess, a little bit hesitant about it is the fact that the RTX 3060 can sometimes be as cheap as $800 and you get more you get more performance of the 3060 for sure than a 3050 Ti. So that's the only thing when you're $800 you might be able to get a 3060 for that money, but you're probably not going to get as nice of a chassis display keyboard trackpad as this one. So that's the trade-off. Also this has 16 gigs of RAM. You don't need to worry about upgrading that where with the cheaper like $550, $600 Lenovo and Gigabyte G5, those laptops you're gonna have to upgrade the RAM after the fact, which if you're going for a budget laptop, oftentimes you don't know how to take a laptop apart or want to deal with buying RAM because you might not even know which RAM to buy. So um, overall, first impressions, this is, uh, I'd give it probably like an 8.5 out of 10 overall for the first impressions as a whole unit. It's not perfect. It's certainly more of a budget-ish machine, but you're gonna be able to play lots of games and be really happy with this laptop overall if you're on like that medium low budget. If you can swing up to 1,000 or $1,100, I think it would be worth spending the extra money to get like the Asus G15 Advantage Edition or for example, the Acer Predator Helios 300 was on sale for $1,000 just recently. So if you can get that back on sale for $1,000, that would probably be also worth the $200 upgrade. But if, you, if you're strictly to $800 or less, this is the nicest machine I've seen for $800 or less. That's what I'll say at this point. It's clearly the nicest machine for $800 or less that I've seen so far. So I guess that's a huge win for Acer Nitro 5, in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, that's the summary. Those are my thoughts, initial impressions. Hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. I'll have more live streams coming up as well as a full benchmarking of this machine, um, a full review, hopefully, of this coming out in the next few weeks. Um, and then the Lenovo IdeaPad, a full benchmark live stream coming up. Uh, I got to do some prep work, get everything installed and set up, and then I can do those live streams. Um, and then I'll, I've also got the RTX 4090 CyberPower PC desktop that I'm reviewing and the Quest Pro as well. Okay, let me just check chat and then we'll end the live stream. Birdwatch says, I can get a Lenovo Legion 5 with a 3050 Ti in it for $499, but also with my 25% off coupon, I can get it for $370-ish. Is this literally a good deal for a decent gaming laptop? Wow, that is a really good deal. No, I would say that if you can get that a Lenovo Legion 5 with a 3050 Ti for $499 and then you have an additional coupon off, then yeah, I would say that's a way better deal. Um, but most people are, aren't going to know how to do that or know what to do. And most people don't have a 25% off coupon for Lenovo either. So yeah. And Lenovo typically doesn't offer a 3050 Ti 
for $499. So, um, but in terms of the chassis quality, I would say the Nitro 5 is on the same tier now as a Legion 5. It's very similar mid-grade um, build quality. Um, yeah. Will you still come back to the Helios 300? Oh, good question, Jax. Uh, I need to get it swapped out. Um, and then I would like to do that one as well, at least the unboxing and uh, performance testing. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's it for the live stream, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll have more content for you coming up. See you guys soon.